When managing a Windows Server, many times we need to see what's happening with our processes. And you can see here that it gives us some information about our processes in the Task Manager. And we can certainly add a few other types of columns to help out. But it never really gives us enough information that will really help us out in case we need to do some troubleshooting. So let's go ahead and cancel that. And we can do a command in PowerShell that will give us more information. The command is the get dash process. I'm going to put in the pipe command and then type in more so that way it doesn't scroll down the, uh, the page where we can't see what's happening here. Now we can just go one page at a time. All right, so under the get process, we see handles, NPM, PM, WS, CPUs. Uh, we see some things that are the same, and we see some things that are additional, like the ID, for instance, is the same as the process ID in Task Manager, and CPUs is the same as the processor usage as well. Let's take a look at the working set, WS, and then the K in the parenthesis, and that's the process where it shows us the set of pages in the virtual address space. And this is all really useful information in case we need to troubleshoot a particular process. However, let's drill down a little further and see of any processes that might be above 20 megabytes. Let's go ahead and put that command in. We'll start by clearing the screen. And here we have the command get dash process, the pipe command, where object. So we're looking for a specific type of object. In this case, it's the working set. Now you're always going to start with the curly brackets, a dollar sign underscore. And that's because we're looking for something specific from that chart. So if you're ever looking for something specific after receiving all of the data, then you'll want to start out with that kind of syntax. Then we do the period followed by the category. So in this case, it is the working set that we're looking for. And we see the GT, which stands for greater than. So we could also do less than or equal to. And then we see the 20 million. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And these are the particular processes that are above 20 million under the WS uh, category that you see here right in the middle of the screen. Now we can troubleshoot which process might be taking up too much space or which processes because we don't want to have any over a certain amount. We can then end those processes or troubleshoot those processes as well. Now we're going to do a different command, which is going to be similar to what we just did, but instead of looking at the working set, it's going to be looking at which processes are using more CPUs. So let's go ahead and type that command in. First we'll clear the screen again. And we'll take our last command and we're going to go to the number one. So take out 20 million, go to one, and we're going to change out working set with CPU. Everything else in the command stays the same. We hit enter and there we go. So CPUs, we see these are the particular processes that are using more than 1.0 of the CPU. And you can do that for each of these different categories. Now let's do another command using get process. And this particular one, we're doing the get dash process of PowerShell. So we're going to see what file version information it is. And you can do this against any of the executable files. So we see that the product version is 10.0 and the uh, extension after that. This can be really useful if you want to see the file version of the executable. Now it's not necessarily uh, the version of PowerShell we're seeing. We're seeing the file version of PowerShell.exe. And again, you can do that with any one of these. So one of the great ways to troubleshoot this is if you're looking to see if uh, servers or workstations are running the same version of an executable file on more than one computer or server. And if they're not, you can copy those files over or reinstall the application. Now let's take a look at another get process command, get dash process. We're just going to use PowerShell as an example. And we want to know who the owner of a process is. In this case, who's the owner of this PowerShell? And we can see that widget is the domain backslash administrator who I am logged in as. If we type of who am I, we can see that I am widget administrator. So I'm the one who has this open. This can be really useful if you are concerned that maybe hackers are logged into your server or if somebody's doing something that they shouldn't, then you can take a look at who is the owner of that process. Now let's see how much resources are being used by the PowerShell uh, box that you see right here in front of us. So if we go ahead and type get dash process PowerShell, so we can just pick any one of the processes from the uh, you know, previous commands and hit enter. And we can see that PowerShell is using this much CPU, this, this is the ID, and this many handles, etc. If you'd like to know all of the different types 
of parameters that you can use with get process, just type in help get dash process. And here we see syntax and description. We see related links and remarks. And if we scroll up a little bit under synopsis, it says that this shows the processes that are running on a local computer or a remote computer. So we can remote into another computer and get the processes off of that, or just do a get process followed by the computer name. And then we can get the processes while we're still logged in locally to our own PowerShell. Now we did uh, a video on how to remote into another computer on PowerShell in this series. You can go ahead and take a look. So you can see how powerful the get-process command is, and it should be in the toolbox of any IT administrator.